Hi, scientists. I am sitting here with my rainforest scientist, Dr. Gail Ramos, and we were thinking about the letter that we all received yesterday from the rainforest scientist, Dr. Geraldina McQueen. And we were thinking about how important it was, how she told us that we can help her help the rainforest. But to do that, we have to do lots of work of learning about the rainforest first. So to help us start learning about the rainforest, I am going to do a read aloud today called A Rainforest Habitat by Bobby Kalman. And we're going to start learning some things about the rainforest. So your job is to watch this video of the read aloud, and then you're going to go on Seesaw and talk about your learning, record some of the things that we learned so we can get our brains going and start learning about the rainforest to help us with that important work that we were asked to do from our letter. So remember that as you are watching this video, it is a video, so you can pause it and play it as I go. If it goes too quick, you can rewind it and listen again. Um, so make sure that you are listening, pausing when you need to, going back when you need to, and make sure that you are ready to tell your rainforest scientist all about the rainforest um, after watching this video. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and I'm going to show you the book. So here it is, I'm gonna make it nice and big to fill our screen. It is called A Rainforest Habitat. And it says that we are gonna learn about the huge trees, colorful flowers and other plants in the South American tropical rainforest. What is a habitat? A habitat is a place in nature. Oh, as I'm reading this, I'm noticing that that word habitat is bold. Did anybody else notice that that word was bold too? So when that word is bold, when it's a darker color than the rest of the words, what does that tell us? It usually tells us that that's an important word, something that we should pay attention to because it's really important to what we're reading. So make sure that you have your listening ears on and you're listening to see why that word habitat is really important. A habitat is a place in nature. Plants live in habitats. Animals live in habitats too. Some animals make homes in habitats. So do you see here, what animals do you think might have this as their habitat? This part of the rainforest, what animals do you think might live in there? Living and non-living things. Ooh, did anyone else notice that those were bold again? So those are gonna be some important words too. There are living things in habitats. Plants and animals are living things. See some living things on this page. There are also non-living things in habitats. Rocks, water, and dirt are non-living things. Think about some living, as we're reading this book, think about what living and non-living things you're seeing in every page of this Rainforest Habitat book. Think about what living and non-living things are in this habitat as we keep reading. Everything they need. Plants and animals need air, water, and food to stay alive. Plants and animals find the things they need in their habitats. This caiman needs water. It swims and finds food in the water. So does the caiman look like another animal you might know? A crocodile or an alligator? Staying alive, the squirrel monkey lives in a habitat. Everything the monkey needs to stay alive is in its habitat. The monkey has found a piece of fruit to eat. So looking on these pages, do you see some living and non-living things? Do you see the caiman and the squirrel uh, monkey as living things? We've also got some plants, right, that are living things. But maybe there's some, like the water, is that a living thing? about, think about the living and non-living things. What is a rainforest? That's an important question for a rainforest scientist to know, right? What is a rainforest? Oh, and it's bold to show us it's important. A rainforest is a habitat. There are many trees in a rainforest. Rainforests are in parts of the world that get lots of rain. Rain helps trees grow. Rainforest trees go to be very, very tall. The Amazing Amazon. This book is about the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is in South America. Many plants and animals live in this rainforest. The iguana lives in the Amazon rainforest. You see some living and non-living things here. Rainforest weather. 
This reminds me of in class whenever we were thinking about what um, what our rainforest scientists would need to wear. We were thinking about what the climate, what the weather was like in the rainforest. And we watched some videos where we thought about how it was hot and it was wet in the rainforest. And we thought about what clothes we would need. So this is gonna tell us more about that rainforest weather that we already started thinking about. The Amazon rainforest is near the equator. The equator is an imaginary line around the center of earth. The weather near the equator is hot all year. The rainforest or the weather is hot in the Amazon rainforest. This baby ocelot is hot. It is cooling off in some shade. Oh, it's so cute. Pouring rain. It rains almost every day in the Amazon rainforest. When it rains, parts of the rainforest become covered in water. The bottoms of these trees are covered in water. Can you imagine that makes me really glad when I'm looking at my rainforest scientists? And I know a lot of you did this too, put rain boots on our rainforest scientists to help them walk through the rainforest. Rainforest plants. Many trees grow in the Amazon rainforest. Rainforest trees are very tall. Some are as tall as apartment buildings. Ooh, I live in an apartment building. That makes me want to go look at how tall it is and think about trees that are that tall too. Other plants grow in the Amazon rainforest too. Some of these plants are bushes. Others are vines, flowers, and fruit. Many of the plants in the Amazon rainforest have flowers. The flowers are colorful. Some plants also have fruit. Mango trees have both flowers and fruit. This makes me think about when we make our rainforest, if we make a rainforest mural, what um, plants we will put in it, what flowers and vines and bushes and trees we will put in it. Making food. Living things need food to stay alive. Are plants living things? Plants make their own food. They make food from sunlight, air, and water. You've been learning about this in your twig science unit that you've been working on at home. You've been learning a little bit about this also. So think about that knowledge whenever we read this page. Making food from air, sunlight, air, and water is called photosynthesis, another bold word. Taking it all in. A plant gets sunlight through its leaves. It also gets air through its leaves. A plant gets water through its roots. A plant uses sunlight, air, and water to make food. So in the picture, see, and this is like what you did in your science lesson, where the sun makes the light and the leaves take it in and they take in air and roots take in water. So they get sunlight and air from the top and then they get water from the roots in the bottom. Rainforest animals. These animals live in the Amazon rainforest. They are able to live in this hot, wet habitat. The animals know how to find food. They also know how to find homes. So take a second and look at this page. You can pause the video here and look at the different animals that we have in the Amazon rainforest. Finding food. Animals must eat to stay alive. Some animals eat only plants. Animals that eat plants are called herbivores. This macaw is an herbivore. It eats nuts and seeds. Eating animals. Other animals are carnivores. Carnivores eat animals. This jaguar is a carnivore. It eats fish, frogs, and turtles. Eating both. Some animals are omnivores. You and I are omnivores also because, well, most people, some people are herbivores and eat only vegetables and um, non-meat but some of us are omnivores where we eat both. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. This monkey is an omnivore. It eats fruit and insects. Getting energy. All living things need energy. They need energy to grow and to move. Energy comes from sunlight. Plants get energy from sunlight. Animals cannot get energy from sunlight. They get energy by eating other living things. A capybara is an herbivore. It gets energy by eating grass, eating animals. Carnivores get energy by eating other animals. This puma is a carnivore. It gets energy by eating capybaras. So the sun gives energy to the grass. The capybara eats the grass to get energy. 
And then the puma gets its energy by eating the capybara. So all of our energy comes from the sun. In the trees. Many animals live in trees. Some animals swing from tree to tree. This woolly monkey swings from tree to tree. It uses its long arms and strong head to swing, flying high. Some rainforest animals fly. Birds and bats are animals that fly. They flap their strong wings. They fly from tree to tree looking for food. This short-tailed bat is flying around looking for food. Ooh, some more living things that I'm adding to my list. How about you? On the forest floor. Some rainforest animals live on the ground. The ground in the rainforest is called the forest floor. This millipede has many legs. It uses its legs to walk on the forest floor. Life on the bottom. This Brazilian tapir lives on the forest floor. It rests under trees during the day. At night, it walks around looking for food to eat. The tapir eats fruits, leaves, stems, and other plant parts. So here it talks about one of the layers of the forest, the forest floor. See how bold it is to tell us it's important. I'm going to show you the other layers that are in the rainforest. So whenever we look at the forest, we have these tall, tall trees. And I know in our class, um, we talked a little bit about the different layers and how they might um, be affected by the rain. So there are some different layers of the rainforest. And these are going to be super important when we go and build rainforest murals. It's going to be super important that we know all of the layers of the rainforest and we think about what what living and non-living things make those different parts, those different layers, their habitats. So this top layer is called the emergent layer at the very top. This is like birds and butterflies would be up here. Like things that would fly would probably be up here, right? Because it'd be hard to get up there if you couldn't fly or maybe, and then it looks like here, some of our climbers are there because this in our canopy, the next highest layer is still really tall but we've got some of our flyers there, but then we've got other animals that do their climbing to get up there. So there we have toucans and monkeys. Then we have the understory. And this is kind of, this is like where the trunks of the trees um, are and like the beginning of like the bottom layers of the trees. And here, and it goes all the way down. This is all understory. Snakes, red-eyed tree frogs, and other animals live in the understory or lower branches. And then we've got the forest floor. What animals do you think might be on the forest floor, the ground level? Animals such as jaguars can be found on the dark forest floor. Why do you think it might be dark on that forest floor? We see it's nice and sunny up here. So why would it be dark down here? Because we have all of these layers that the leaves just block out the sunlight. So it gets darker and darker as they go along. So different animals might have different adaptations to help them with that. All right, rainforest scientists. Awesome job reading along with me to this story about the rainforest. Great job learning about habitat, thinking about what the living and non-living things were and learning about the different layers of the forest and how we get how animals um, and plants get energy in the forest. All of this is super important information that we are going to be using to keep thinking and keep learning about the rainforest so that we can help Dr. Geraldina to think about ways that we can help the rainforest. Great job. After watching this video, you are going to go back to Seesaw and finish the assignment that is about this read aloud. Great work, third graders.